to the front page of the standard this morning. If government owes you, it's time to strike. If government owes you, it is time to strike. This is what the standard is holding for you. Illegality. Court says many Kenyans owed by the state can go ahead and auction public property or even attach the salary of a state officer who is impeding payment. The auction items can range from a police car to a government building. And this story continues on page six of the standard. If the government owes you, it's time to strike. And we know it's been and we've been talking a good game about the pending bills. This is what is in the front page or on the front page of the standard today. Welfare, start to close children's homes and reunite families. This is a strategy. Move to shut down the homes is informed by research that indicate the institutions do more harm to the child, with many turning out worse than their age mates. 45,000, that is their more than 45,000 vulnerable and orphan children the government intends to remove from more than 850 children homes and reunite them with their families and communities. And according to UNICEF and other studies uh, done globally, at least eight out of 10 of his children have biological and extended families. You have a story well covered for you and fleshed out inside the standard today. The anticipation is that by the year 2032, all the children in the CCIs will have got their families or reintegrated. Also on the side, University holds service for accident victims. Tears flowed freely during the memorial service of 11 Kenyatta University students who perished while on tour. You have a story on page three of the standard today. Also inside the health and science magazine that comes in handy for you inside the standard is about common oral health mistakes you may be making. You can all read all about it inside the standard this morning. Let's look at what we have on the teaser on top. Church asks government to end health wars is another story on page two of the standard Senegal reports after weeks of anxiety. That is on page 21 of the standard. Four billion shillings will fall for coffee farmers. Page 19 of the standard are also on voice talking about honor Kiptum with Olympic gold. Honor Kiptum with Olympic gold just to honor him posthumously. That story is on page 29 of the standard this morning. This is our looks. Make sure you grab a copy for those riveting stories as well. Let me try and bring up the Daily Nation, which is up next. Revealed schools that no one wants. There are schools that no one really wants. And we have uh, the sub-headline reading empty. Millions of shillings are going down the drain as parents and learners shun some public primary and secondary schools as well as universities in sharp contrast to the over enrollment and congestion associated with most public institutions of learning. The situation is so bad that some of these schools are now facing imminent closure. You have a story on page 6 and 7 of the Daily Nation. The flag reads education. Kileleshua Primary in Nairobi has a capacity of 2,000, but only has 200 pupils currently. You can read and find out why on page 2 and 7, on page 6 and 7 of the Daily Nation. Faithful Mark Palm Sunday as Easter beckons Bishop Dominic Kimengich of Eldridge Catholic Diocese leads faithful during Palm Sunday to commemorate the triumphant er entry of Jesus into Jerusalem yesterday at the Sacred Heart of Jesus Cathedral in Eldoret Town, Wastingishu County. Teachers cry foul over recent promotions. It's another story on to follow inside the standard this morning. State's big plan for Isla's AUC job bid. The government is de developing a fully-fledged campaign secretariat and a budget to support Azimio leader Raila Odinga or Raila Odinga's bid for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission. You have a story on page five of the Daily Nation. Fake fertilizer sparks panic among farmers. The infiltration of cartels selling substandard inputs into the government subsidized fertilizer program has caused panic among farmers in maize growing zones. You have a story on page 21 of the Daily Nation this morning. And vroom, all roads lead to Naivasha this week as the safari rally revs up to a noisy, dusty start. You have a story at page 38 and 39 of the Daily Nation. This is how it looks. Make sure you grab a copy if it floats your boat. You have the star up next. Audit bears six state of county hospitals. That is the star this morning. Services. Gadungu recommends state funds, equips, and adequately staff public hospitals. That is what uh, the Auditor General is talking about. At least 14 facilities have an accounted revenue amounting to 327 million shillings, highest in 
Igegania Hospital. You can follow the story on page four and five of the Star this morning. And President Ruto has donated two million shillings to help the send off. Uh, this is uh, the picture of uh, the record mass that uh, was conducted in favor of the deceased who perished through the accident. That is uh, the 11 students of Kenyatta University. You can see First Lady Mama Ruto and the Education Cabinet Secretary Zekil Machogu during the memorial service. And uh, the story continues on inside the star. Prestigious award, queer organization, right? Uh, wins recognition for defending LG LGBTQ. You can follow the story on page two. Transoya, man stoned to death over unpaid debt and the TB infection. Why so many Kenyans likely to die of the disease? And pharma reaping big with organic herbs, spices in Morang as well. These are some of the stories also that uh, is in the publication today. Transformation agenda, we will not be derailed. Ruto tells detractors, you have a story on page eight of the staff. Paper Daily, shattered dreams, pained families and the university community come face to face with the reality of road accident that cut short the future of young students. It's a big loss. You have a story on page four and five, and you can see some of the faces. Austin Omondi, Owino. We have Benaya Zoteno, Helen Bula, Kisilu, Felix Ogori Nyata, John Biridi, Muraidi, Valerie Akinyo Oma, Neville Omondi Opio, Oslo Mwendwa, Rogers Kiprutichrono, Patricia Murugi Mwangi, Michael Muteti. They were shining examples to their peers and the pride and joy of their families and communities. Some were the only hope of their families. You can follow the story of uh, the shattered dreams, the uh, demise of the students who perished in that tragic road accident. We'll run you by the story as well. On top there, schools raised the alarm over the return of COVID-19. Schools raised the alarm over the return of COVID-19. We might be going back to the masks uh, again. That is a story you want to follow on page two, but we eagerly wait to hear from the Ministry of Health regarding this a particular return of COVID-19. And three officers popular DJ held after inspector's death. You can follow the story on page three of the People Daily this morning. Serikali Apiga Jekiraila, that is a splash on the front page of Taifa Leo. Mbalina Utengwa Mabajeti, Rice William Ruto Namku, Mawaziri, Watamsaidia Raila Katika Kampeni Kote Africa. As you know it now, they have the secretariat intact, checking into place, and uh, that is where they're going to be using as a nerve center where to coordinate the campaign full-fledged, even as we have the, the Prime Cabinet Secretary warning and cautioning regarding politicizing this issue that uh, sometimes it might work against all the efforts that is being put forward to make sure that he gains this particular city. You have a story on page two of Taifa Leo, and Waku Walia Mgawa Hela Shuleni Kukatwa, that is a story on page three of Taifa Leo as well. State employee pay crosses 70,000 mark on average. A civil servant on average now earns more than a new bank staff. We have SRC pushing to cap wage bill at 35% of revenue. The average take home for a government employee in Kenya crossed the 70,000 shillings mark last year, overtaking the entry level salary in the banking industry and compounded the public wage bill crisis at a time the majority of workers are dealing with pay slip erosion from salary stagnation and rising inflation. You have a story on page two of the Business Daily today. An ex scanning Group CEO, that is Bharat, files 4.3 billion shilling suit of Auster. You have a story inside the Business Daily on page two. Also, KQ defends extension of share trade freeze and Kenya to spend 11 billion shillings on inaugural nuclear reactor. Why judge the client to strike out suit on village market? James Finlay and 3 billion shillings in Kenya exit. That story on page 7 of the Business Daily this morning. We cross borders now to Uganda, where EC cannot be fully independent. This is what Kigundu is saying. In an interview, Dr. Badru Kigundu headed the Electoral Commission for 14 years, enabling him to oversee three general elections and referendum. He shares his experiences on page 6 and 7 of the Daily Monitor. If you're waking up in Uganda hot seat, this there is no way you can say an institution can be 100% independent. Independent from what? So we have to develop and understand that this independence 
what this independence is. This is what he says. And you can read the rest of the details there inside the Daily Monitor. Also, Christians mark Palm Sunday as the Holy Week starts. Christians across the globe yesterday celebrated Palm Sunday, which usually falls a week before Easter. The day commemorates Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, an event mentioned in each of the four canonical Gospels in the Bible. You can follow the story inside the Daily Monitor in Tanzania. What will change under the diaspora's special status? Proposed amendments, among other objectives, seeks to give Tanzanians in diaspora the legitimacy to own properties such as land in Tanzania and that they should be free to pass on or transfer the property. On page two of the citizen is where it is all laid out for you and fleshed out. Act one's urgent action of electoral commission reforms. That is another story in page three of the citizen. Rising woman, Mzuri at forefront of championing women's and girls' rights in Zanzibar. Read all about her inside the citizen as well. Why Modi's upgrade of credit rating matters to Tanzania. Modi's upgrading of Tanzania's credit rating is crucial because it sends the message that the country's economy is in the right footing experts. I'll saying this, you have a story on page two. Will more shops cap Forex racket in Arusha? A probably question there. All the answers tucked away inside the citizen. We cross over now to Rwanda where Lake Kivu, two islands, to undergo forest restoration in 2011. Rwanda committed to restoring two meters, or two million hectares, I should say, of land by 2030 through the Bond Challenge. You have a story on page three. And PSD, PL to endorse Kagame in the presidential elections. You can see the Social Democratic Party uh, President Dr. Vincent Biruta and the President of Liberal Party Donatil Mukabalisa speaking during their party's National Congress in Kigali on Sunday. And both parties have announced that they will endorse incumbent President Paul Kagame, who will be the flag bearer of the RPF in Kuntanyi in the July presidential elections. You have a story inside the New Times. Over a thousand students to benefit from Tibet scholarship programs expansion. All that inside the New Times as well. But like he never left. Museveni's son, that is General Mohozi, is now army chief after his promotion coming out of time. The veteran leader is going for seventh time. That is the seventh time. Question, is standby generator now on or off? <laughs> That's the question there. Is standby generator now on or off? We have a story in page two page 10, I should say, of the East African. The battle for Uganda's petrol imports millions. Tanzania is availing itself of business as Nairobi and Kampala haggle over red tap, giving Museveni a deal. He can't refuse, and this is where we're losing. As uh, Kenya, you can follow the story on page 5. Uncertainty clouds polls timelines in South Sudan. Mashar pushes for an extension of voting dates as state grapples with poor preparedness. You have a story on page 8 and 9 of the East African EAC court. Underfunded, overwhelmed regional court officials struggle to clear backlog as Spartan states sue each other every other day. You have a story on page 29, 21 of East African. This is how the economist is looking this week. Israel alone. And you can see the flag there flapping for lonely that is Israel alone. The problem question is, right, with their, they've been getting famously with the United States, but uh, due to the recent development regarding Rafa, where Biden has been very adamant that Netanyahu should not be invading Rafa to try and uh, smoke out some of uh, the Hamas terrorists there, it seems uh, he's not drawing back and now is flying alone. That is why we have the Israel alone flag flying here. This is The Economist. Why Hispanic like Trump and China, Iran and Russia versus the West? Don't cap abortion pills. AI music, algorithms and blues all that tucked away inside The Economist. All right, Newsweek, shopping for spam. This is what is inside the Newsweek. The online baby boom in unconventional families you can follow the story inside the music as well, just giving an indication of what is happening to the family institutions, well, globally, and by this age, all the problem. You can follow the story inside the Newsweek as well. Uh, we have the week as well, is Stalin's footsteps. In Stalin's footsteps, how Putin became dictator for life. And it's all about the re-election of Russian president, all right? 
That is uh, the week according to the publication of the US. Also, I think the UK is carrying the same Schumer's warning to Israel. This is also the controversy that has risen regarding uh, Israel and uh, one of the consummate uh, congressmen or, or a senator there of US. You can follow the story inside the present publication of the week. All right. Also, Washington Examiner, Trump yet again. The former president talks to the Washington Examiner about his improbable comeback, right? Like it or lump it, it could be the next president, of course, of US. This is what the Washington Examiner is talking about. What happens after Gaza war? If you're going to write all this, I think they're not related to us, but you can read about it. All right, let's look at the editorial cartoons in gray at 60. And you can see there the leopard, all the ball there. They've been celebrating 60 years. That is the AFC Leopards. If you have no sort of idea what it really means, the Abaluya Football Club, that is what we have inside the standard today, just in commemoration of the 60 years of AFC. If you're a football fan, I gather, I don't know if Dr. Nikali is a football fan or Dr. Mokali Mulu. I know Hilary <laughs> Sige is a runner, so I won't go there, he's an athlete. <laughs> but but again, uh, I'm actually running a football tournament in Bomet County. Oh yeah, uh, yes. you can tell us about your football tournament. It's quite a fantastic uh, experience, uh -huh. I, I must say. Uh -huh. We are at the moment in the sub-county finals. Yes. Yesterday was just an amazing experience that we had uh -huh. in Sotik sub-county. Uh -huh. So, I run, yes, but I play football as well. You play football? And I'm... You play football yourself? Yes. For the fun of it. I'm not a professional footballer though. Right. I wouldn't claim to be. For the fun of it? For the fun of it, yes. It's I wonder why Makali plays. Uh, Makali <laughs> doesn't look like he, he is in those games. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe he's good at draft. <laughs> and then good morning, Duba. Good morning, Duba. How are you? <laughs> we are fine. No, no, no. I used to be an LT also in the past. But you know now, Fred is catching up with us. He mm. didn't just do no more. Jim, how are you? No, if it just... In terms of, we are fan, I'm actually a fan of football, mm. but not the European one, African football. Mm. So I like watching African teams when they play. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I used to do hockey, uh -huh. uh, then abilities and uh, football also. Uh -huh. But uh, now, not much. Not much. Uh, not much. All right, uh, mm. Dr. Nikal. But you, you know, as me and Nikal, we have... Uh, our sports fund in our city and our city of our regiment. Yes. Mm. So every, every year we have tournaments. Ah, tournaments, okay. Okay. Which we organize for the young people to to, 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 to play. Okay. And, uh, we are also part of it. At mm. the end of the day, you are the chief guest. So <laughs> the trainers are there in track suits <laughs> and sports shoes. Uh. And you are, you are with them. Uh, mm. But uh, Dr. Nikal, you've never actually been a member of uh, the Bunga FC. No, I've been never been a member of the, the longest time. Hmm? No, the, what I played last was a long time in high school. I used to play hockey. That was used to my, play hockey? Yeah, that was my mm. favorite. Because you, you had to make a good use of a hockey stick that you oh. came up. That was the requirement when you, when you, when you get to school. No, it is, it's not using the hockey stick uh, to, to, to protect yourself or hit your opponent. <laughs> Is how you play the ball with hey, it. Mm. Yes, but I, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, soccer. I watch soccer, but I'm not uh, a particular fan of a particular uh, team. Mm -hmm. I, I go to the, when I go to the field. I watch and I enjoy whichever team plays well. Okay. Yeah. There is mm, not really the beauty of aligning yourself with a particular team. That makes the fun of it. So you should. This, they, they, uh, you create a team spirit. But sometimes I'm just watching them play the ball. And I remember, the person I remember most was Diego Maradona a long time. When he took a ball from one end of the goal and moved to the other end and scored. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has ever done that. He was at the there, famous uh, hand of God. And there was a Cameroonian uh, uh, goalkeeper called no Thomas Mukono. Mm -hmm. They were so tall when he spread his hands, literally from one end to the end. So he covers the goalposts completely. He covers the goalposts. Yeah, so. It is good to have you guys. We're still mm -hmm. legally waiting to be joined by Geoffrey Rooker as well, member of uh, Parliament of Mbere. 
And uh, we continue to pass with the conversation. Always, you know the drill. You get to drive the show with us. You can hit us on X at KTN News is our X handle at Dibalane as well. Let's back down to some of the stories that, of course, uh, we are hoping will have a happy medium as far as the stalemate is concerned. And we have the Council of Governors who are calling on striking doctors to resume duty as as a long-lasting solution to their grievances is sought. COG Health Committee Chair, that is Antaraka Nithi Governor, that is Mbomi Njuki, says the doctor's demands can be met but will be implemented gradually. This has a section of the clergy also weighed in on the matter, calling on the government to fast-track talks and finding a long-lasting solution. The clergy says it is time policies guiding the sector were revised to find a permanent solution. Last week's efforts by the government to resolve the stalemate bore no results as doctors held they will continue downing the tools until their demands are met. KTN's Alan Uchanda has more. The factors strike and there are no signs the medics are losing their stand and resume work even as Kenyans can't try it, continue suffering due to lack of the crucial services. Council of Governors Health Committee Chairperson Tharaka Nethi Governor Mudomi Njoki now calling on the doctors to resume work as their issues are addressed. It's a way of making a statement. By now we have heard you. Not only hearing you, we have felt you. We know you are crucial. We know your issues are not being met. And there's no way we can work retrogressively or any other way. We must work to ensure that your end of the bargain is met. Lakini na nyinyi. Modomi accusing the medics union of insincerity, noting that some of their members have been staying away from work while furthering their studies, but still drawing salaries. Last week, Thursday, saw a grueling seven-hour session spearheaded by head of public service Felix Koske that ran into the wee hours of Friday morning, but the talks between the government and the striking doctors broke down again, leaving the health crisis unresolved. <laughs> We are ready as a government to cooperate, but it is not possible to do it in one day. We must have a workable solution where we must trust each other. We say my internship within the month of June, my Ivanyo Mwazi August, Mwaza Kulipa and your petition budget, the union should understand. We say my universal health coverage at Wezi Wandika na Sikumoja, Baka Ikuwe graduate. Because at the end of the day, we are being retrogressive with our health sector, which we are done so much. The clergy too, during the Palm Sunday service, weighed in. <laughs> Clofas Ossesa of the Nakuru Catholic Diocese and his Kakamega counterpart Joseph Obanye calling on the government to fast track talks with the doctors and save Kenyans seeking services from public hospitals. Uh, huduma wanazo zitoa madaktari na wahudumu wale wengine wa afya ni huduma ambazo ni za muhimu kwa maisha ya mwananchi yoyote. Na wanapokuwa na kilio basi ni vema watu waketi na waweze kuangalia kilio chao ni kipi na ni vipi wanaweza kushughulikiwa ili wao pia wa, wajione kama wanashughulikiwa na wanasikizwa na huduma wanazozitoa zinadhaminiwa na wananchi wa Kenya. Kwa hivyo mimi ningependa kuwatetea pia kwamba wasikizwe. The Employment and Labor Relations Court had on Wednesday directed the parties involved in the negotiations to end the strike and attend the Thursday meeting to alleviate the suffering of patients who are unable to access medical services, including basic and emergency services in various public hospitals across the country. Their grievances include lack of comprehensive medical cover, persistent delays in posting and paying interns, and mismanagement of the internship program, besides adequate funding for the health sector, with a specific budget commitment of 425 billion shillings. I'm just appealing upon the doctors. Kindly go back to the negotiating table. Negotiate. Wa Kenya, we want to be healthy. Malumbano ikiendelea kukua, 
we shall have a sick nation. And especially right now, there is a lot of homer, there is a lot of dust, and I think our people, let us maintain that what we were doing, sometimes back washing our hands and even putting on masks. Homa iko kali, na mi naomba madaktari, tafadhali. Murudu kwa negotiating table, solution will be fine. The parties agreed to form a 13-member committee with four persons from the union, three from the Ministry of Health, and the rest from key stakeholders such as the Council of Governors. Over the next few days, the committee will frame the 19 issues and categorize them into either county-level concerns, national government responsibilities, or specific hospitals identified by the union. Alan Ochanda, KTN News. President, all right, President Wilamuto has assured that those currently occupying land that the government intends to construct affordable housing on will be compensated. According to President Ruto, the government will not evict anybody. This comes as the Kenya Revenue Authority directed employers to deduct 1.5% of employees' gross pay and contribute a similar amount beginning, that beginning, I should say, with the March salary. Jeff Kirui has more. Less than a week after the enactment of the affordable housing legislation, the Kenya Revenue Authority has directed that employees and employers have until 9th of next month to each ensure the remittance of the 1.5% of gross pay towards the affordable housing project. President William Ruto reiterates his unwavering commitment to push through the housing project. Bishop Amenisaidia kuniambia ya kwamba jameni musinite majina mara sakayo mara nani. And I want to tell you, I have no problem being called whatever name, so long as I achieve a better destiny for our country. The president was attending a church service at ACK Bahati in Nairobi. However, assured that those occupying land intended for the construction of the houses that the government will compensate them. Kuna nyumba za serikali, watu mepua notice za kutoka. Mimi sipingi, muradi wote, wa nyumba isijengwe. Lakini ile muda wamepoa ya kutoka tu, ndio ilikuwa inatatiza. So wananchi wapo, wamambu watoke by April 31st. Na watoto walisha ingia form 1, wanangilu ingia form 2, washa ingia mashule. There will be no eviction. Kila mwananchi tutakupatia maali ya kuhishi ukingojea nyumba ijengwe. Hiyo ni kazi yetu. Tutakupatia pesa ya miakamiwili kae mahali lipe rent kidogo tukimaliza nyumba unarudi kwa nyumba yako na kazi inaendelea mbele affordable housing has been a subject of controversy the latest hurdle being a petition in court challenging its constitutionality on the basis that among other issues the national government has taken over housing functions from the county governments tutakuwa na watu wengi ambao hawaoni mahali tunaenda Lakini baadae watakuja kuelewa where we are going. I have absolutely no issue with whatever is being said left, right and center. My focus is to make sure that we change our country. And I am very clear, my brother bishop in my mind. Mungu ajanijalia niwe rais wa Kenya ati kujaza na fasi ya mutu kuitwa rais. Ama ati ni, ndio nipate mshahara, nipate kazi. Apana, mungu wame nipatia hii na fasi, nibadilishe Kenya. And I intend to do it. According to President Ruto, the government intends to construct 250 houses every year with a target of 1 million within his first term in office. Jeff Kirui KT News. And Prime Cabinet Secretary Musala Madavani has warned politicians against making reckless statements that could cost the Azimio Moja one Kenya leader, Raila Odinga, the AU Commission job. Madavani regretted that utterances by a section of politicians might weaken Kenya's quest for the top job, adding that some politicians, both from Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio, have been making comments that could puncture Kenya's bid to take over the chairmanship. Mudavidi was speaking at the funeral service of veteran publisher and author Mze Henry Chakava in Vokoli, Sabatia, in Vihiga County. We need all the hands on the deck. We need experience. We need good people. 
so that they can help in creating proper dialogue, in creating proper inter interconnectivity with the various heads of state, with the various countries, with the various factions, so that we can reconcile our country. And therefore, I want to repeat, in honor of Chakava and all the other people that are here, please let us take this issue of the African Union chairmanship more seriously than we are taking it. A memorial service for the 11 students who died in the road accident in Mongu Voi, Taita Taveta County, was held at the Kenyatta University on Sunday. The third year students were heading to Mombasa on a study tour when the tragedy occurred. As Catherine Oise now reports, their first family of President William Ruto donated two million shillings to help the affected families prepare for burial. <laughs> The anguish of a parent. Sorrow echoes through tears and lamentation. A tragic road accident struck last week Monday, the 18th of March, leaving behind only memories for grieving parents, teachers, relatives and friends. In the wake of this heartbreaking event, students led by the president of the Kenyatta University Students' Union, implored their peers to offer prayers for the families of the victims. It takes effort. It takes God's guidance. It takes a strong heart for you to get to heal from this process. Professor Paul Wainaina is the vice chancellor of Kenyatta University. We also have those who survived, who are here with us, all need help. They need help to navigate. So we are asking everybody to try and console them as they navigate the difficult times. Ezekiel Machugu, the Cabinet Secretary for Education called upon the Ministry of Transport to tighten regulations, urging strict adherence to road safety measures to prevent further tragedies. The government is coming in very, very strongly to tighten the rules to make sure that we don't have the kind of occurrences that we have had in our roads, reading the human laws that we are experiencing here today. In an expression of empathy, First Lady Rachel Ruto mourned the loss of the students, acknowledging that the nation had not only lost scholars but also cherished individuals dearly loved by their families. May we all be comforted. May our children's souls rest in eternal peace. I would like to now present a donation and contribution of two, of two million Kenya shillings from our president to be able to support the families and the entire work that is ahead of us as we prepare to lay the souls of our children. May God rest their souls in peace. Catherine Oise, Katen News. Indeed, may the good Lord rest their soul in eternal peace. And that has been captured also by Ozone Inside at the start today. Some of uh, the school buses, vehicles, they're just uh, a moving coffin, as you can see it here. Stop or else. And uh, we have the reactions that comes from government, uh, which is purely knee-jerk reactions. And uh, we need sobriety on the roads. Uh, which are claiming our children, our parents, our wives, our sisters, our fathers and brothers as well. And we do pray every morning that uh, when we see them embarking or uh, aboarding that particular uh, bus or a van going to school, that they will come home safely. I mean, safely. We've had many cases before. Even some of these buses, they have holes. Uh, we can remember an incident, I think, was in Mombasa where one student actually dropped through a hole and was crushed by a huge tire 
uh, that was very unfortunate. Uh, you know, when we have such uh, conditions uh, that uh, we take to have gone through the checks and balances as far as NTSA is concerned to make them roadworthy. Uh, what does that really pretend? We stand in solidarity with many that have passed on through the tragic uh, road accident, many that have been maimed and changed their lives dramatically. Uh, it is important we know that once we are on the road, we should take care of every person that is also using the same road as well. So let's continue paces with uh, the conversation in the country to make sure that we have safety on our roads at the end of the day. This is what has been captured by Ozone, and this is what Iga has drawn today. A thousand ways to die. And this is a lottery, you can see. If you don't die from fake promises, I don't know, uh, then you can die from fake drinks. If you don't die from fake seeds, you can die from fake fertilizer or fake certificates as well. How can you die through fake certificates? We know what the government has been doing lately, trying to make sure that uh, they are verifying some of the certificates, especially from civil servants, and many of them could die of shock or depression because they, the courts are saying, what you've been accruing with fake certificates as salaries throughout your life that you need to pay back. Will they be able to do that? That's another problem question as well. Thousand way to, ways to die. This is a country, they say, of thievery, thuggery, and fakery. And this is what has been captured by a guy inside the Delhi Nation as well. I mean, we should check that tag, uh, which is upon us, a thuggery of, of citizen and fakery and thievery. All right, I will be showing you more as we take a, a short break right now. We want to take a short break right now, but just to remind you that we are holding court with Dr. James Nikau, who is here with us. He's a member of parliament from uh, SEME. Also, he's a member of the health committee in the National Assembly. Uh, you shall tell us a bit of what uh, is a way forward. There's no happy medium, as I always say, uh, when it comes to the doctors and the government, mm -hmm. right? So the issue of interns uh, is what is a big problem here. <laughs> Uh, we should get a perspective on that. We have Hilary Sigay as well, who is a member of parliament, uh, Senator of Mumet, uh, also the chair of the JLA committee in the Senate. Uh, we shall hear from him as well. Regarding the NADCO report, because uh, indications are, especially from the Azimio side, that uh, uh, we have uh, you and uh, your committee members who are playing delaying tactics in the implementation of some of the silent issues that have been raised within the particular report. You're not giving it a much premium as uh, you should. Uh, instead of also debating that, you went full sim ahead or it was uh, the deputy governor of uh, Hisi that was a concentration. This is what reports are saying as well. We have Geoffrey Ruku who is here as well. He'll tell us more about our new bill that is actually coming up, uh, uh, which is seeking to bail the farmers. Right, and uh, you'll tell us more about this particular bill on the other side of a break. Even as we know, Mount Kenya farmers are decrying the fact that uh, their leaders were sleeping on the job, and uh, some of them they say, Oh, they were not privy to some of the issues that were in the finance bill, especially affecting the farmers as well. So, we have Ruku who will be telling us more on uh, that particular bill that is coming up with and I will be able to give you just much details about that particular bill. This is uh, the fertilizer and the G2G deal, right? We have Ruku seeking to have G2G deal for fertilizer. He'll bear details for us on the other side of a break. We take a short break right now. You're watching Standpoint here on Morning Prime. When you back, of course, we buckle down to that heavy discussion on a raft of issues as well.